The photo you're looking at right now might not seem like much. It's just a typical thru-hiker smiling, enjoying his time on the trail. And I have no doubt that when this photo was taken, that was exactly what Scott Lilly was experiencing. But on August 12th, 2011, Scott Lilly was found dead just off the Appalachian Trail. His death was ruled a homicide and to this day, nobody has been brought to justice for taking his life. In this video, I wanna tell you guys the story of Scott Lilly, and I promise this isn't becoming a true crime channel. This is just an experiment I'm doing. I'll be back to talking about gear and making your mom jokes in just a few days in my next video, but I don't know, I just feel like people don't know about Scott Lilly's story, and I just can't, for the life of me, figure out why more people aren't talking about this. Now, despite this story, I promise you the Appalachian trail is still a safe place every single year millions of people hike on it and to my knowledge only 13 homicides have ever occurred on or near the trail most recently in 2019 through hiker Ronald Sanchez jr. was murdered on the Appalachian Trail in Virginia and when this happened his story received a lot of attention from the media as well as among through hikers and rightfully so it's a super super sad story and I still remember when I first found out about it this was the year after I had completed my through hike of the Appalachian Trail I was enraged honestly and I was really really scared and I feel like pretty much everybody in the through hiking community at least the Appalachian Trail community know about the story of Ronald Sanchez Jr. again as they should and there's also been a few other high profile murder cases that have happened on or near the Appalachian Trail that a lot of people know about I'm sure a lot of you guys have heard about the stories of Julianne Williams and Lolly Winnens they were murdered in Shenandoah National Park in 1996 just off of the Appalachian Trail and then I'm sure a lot of you have also heard of the story of murderer Randall Lee Smith who attempted to kill hikers not once but twice also in Virginia and despite some of these other murders on the Appalachian Trail receiving a lot of attention again from both the media and among hikers nobody seems to be talking about the murder of Scott Lilly there's no books written about him his name doesn't come up when people are talking about safety on the Appalachian Trail and this is really really bizarre to me because his murder was the second most recent one to occur on the Appalachian Trail trail and also because his case has never been solved. Scott Lilly was from South Bend, Indiana, and he had a huge interest in Civil War history. In fact, his trail name was Stonewall, which I assume is a reference to the Confederate commander Stonewall Jackson from the Civil War. After his murder, his sister Allison was interviewed by a local news station and said, quote, he was a 30 year old man who was living out a dream by traveling the Appalachian Trail and visiting Civil War battlefields. Scott Lilly started his hike on June 15th, 2011 at the Mason Dixon line, you know, near the Pennsylvania border there. And he was intending on hiking from there south all the way to the end of the Appalachian Trail at Springer Mountain. But that didn't happen because unfortunately, Scott Lilly was met with foul play. On August 12th, 2011, Scott's body was found just just off of the Appalachian Trail near Cow Camp Gap in Virginia. Cow Camp Gap is in the west central part of the state of Virginia, and it's near the Priest, which is a pretty popular mountain on the Appalachian Trail. It's about 17 miles south of the Priest. In fact, the Priest is actually the last place that anybody heard from or saw Scott Lilly, and this occurred on July 31st, 2011. And this is pretty crazy because that means almost two weeks went by between the last time Scott Lilly was seen or heard from and the time that his body was discovered. He had allegedly camped at the priest shelter around the time that he was last seen, and it seems like his intention was for that next day to hike to Cow Camp Gap Shelter. And given that his body was found very, very close to the shelter, it seems as though he made it before he was murdered. Scott Lilly's body was found in a shallow grave, and later on when an autopsy was done, his death was ruled, I have a really hard time with this word, so do forgive me, asphyxia by suffocation, which obviously meant the death was ruled a homicide. And one thing that strikes me as really bizarre about these circumstances is that most of his backpacking gear was missing from the crime scene. And this included his blue or purple backpack, his Ozark Trail hiking shoes, and one of his, as through hikers and backpackers, we would call luxury items, which was a small, handheld Nintendo game. Like I said, none of this stuff was found at the crime scene, and to my knowledge, none of it has ever been found. And I bring this up because 
it's assumed these items were taken by the killer. Now, I'm not here to try to solve this case. I just simply want to tell Scott Lilly's story. But if I had to interject just a little bit, I just find it really hard to imagine that another through hiker or backpacker could have killed him and then taken his stuff because that backpacker would have already had all of their heavy gear. Again, this is 2011. So yes, ultralight backpacking was a thing back then, but it wasn't nearly as common, so gear was heavier. And even if it was just as common, I just think it's really hard to imagine another backpacker killing him and then carrying out his gear in addition to their own gear and not being detected. That just seems very unlikely to me. Definitely possible, don't get me wrong. And again, I don't know the answers to this case, but it just doesn't seem like the most probable scenario. Since Scott Lilly's murder took place on federal land in the George Washington and Jefferson National Forest, the FBI became the primary agency responsible for the investigation. However, they weren't the only ones investigating because the Virginia State Police, as well as the National Park Service and the US Forest Service was also involved in the investigation. In September of 2011, you know, a short time after the murder had happened and while the investigation was ongoing, the FBI released the trail names of five different hikers who they think may have had contact with Scott Lilly just before the time of his murder. And the thing that's kind of crazy about this is they got those names because they looked at the shelter logbooks. And I don't know, I've just signed so many of those shelter logbooks over the years. I'm sure a lot of people watching have as well. And so it's just kind of crazy to think that one of those entries that you might have left in a shelter logbook could someday be looked at by the FBI as a potential piece of evidence in a very, very serious murder case. And by the way, I'm not gonna list the trail names of these people that were mentioned because as far as I'm aware, none of them were ever implicated in the crime. As the investigation continued, the combined agencies ended up interviewing 83 different people. And this included every long distance hiker that was in the area around the time of the murder, as well as a lot of folks who might have had information about Scott Lilly or the case that were not involved in the hiking community. And then in 2012, there was a $10,000 reward that was put up for anyone with information that could lead to the arrest and conviction of Scott Lilly's killer. In doing my research, I'm not really sure if this reward came from the FBI themselves or from the family of Scott Lilly. I got some kind of conflicting information there, but I do know that this reward was put up. And I also know that the investigating authorities were particularly interested in hearing from 2011 through hikers. And that makes sense because obviously they might have had some connection to Scott Lilly. Not saying that, again, any of them were implicated in the crime, but if anything, Thing, maybe they could provide some information that could have helped the investigation. But they were also interested in hearing from 2012 hikers. And I think the reason for this was because they wanted to know if anyone in the area, you know, just a year after the murder occurred, might have noticed anything unusual. I'm assuming here, but I imagine that maybe they were looking for hikers who might have accidentally stumbled across any of that missing gear that was taken from Scott Lilly after he was murdered. And another thing I want to note here is that so far the authorities have not drawn any connections to other murders or disappearances in the area. Because it's kind of crazy, a lot of the high profile murder cases that have happened on the Appalachian Trail seem to have taken place in Virginia. But it does seem like there was some speculation that Scott Lilly's case might have been connected to some of the other ones like the double murder that took place in Shenandoah National Park. But again, the authorities have pretty clearly stated that they have no reason to believe that Scott Lilly's murder was connected to any of these other ones, it really does seem like an isolated incident. Despite all of the investigations and the reward that was put out, nobody knows who killed Scott Lilly. No suspects have ever been named and Unfortunately, the case seems to have gone cold. I wasn't involved in the through hiking community in 2011. I'm pretty sure I didn't even know what the Appalachian Trail was in 2011, but I went back and did some research online and it seems like at the time and just after the murder, there was some chatter amongst people online about it. But in recent times, it seems like that chatter has pretty much dried up to zero. Not only among hikers, but also among the media and even the police. This is just my personal opinion and there's definitely a chance that I missed something here but from what I've seen online it doesn't seem like investigators have released any new information about the case or any calls for more information from the public 
since 2012, just the year after it happened. Again, I definitely could have missed something there. So if you've noticed any press releases from the authorities about this case since 2012, please leave a comment and let me know. There has been a few true crime podcasts and like blogs that have covered this story a little bit more recently, but even those are pretty few and far between. And I think what's most startling and just bizarre to me is that I haven't seen anybody involved with the trail community Talk about this story, talk about this case. And to be totally clear, I'm not saying that's the case because people don't care. I think people in the trail community and people who love the Appalachian Trail just simply don't know about Scott Lilly and what happened to him. I know the chances of this video making a difference in the case is basically zero, but Again, I just feel like more people need to be talking about what happened to Scott Lilly. And of course, on the tiny chance that anyone watching this actually has any information about what happened to Scott Lilly, call the number on the screen right now. That is the number for the FBI's Richmond, Virginia branch. I know this video is a bit different, guys. So if you enjoyed it, please consider subscribing. I wanna get this channel to 50,000 subscribers. And I promise in just a few days in my next video, we will be right back to goofing around, making your mom jokes and talking about backpacking gear like I always am except for now.